tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. All about nutrition from your favorite dietitian. Everything you need to digest in your mind. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Making you healthier one bite at a time. With Tony. With Tony. With Tony. Welcome to the Tips with Tony podcast. I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. This next clip is part one of a free body image webinar. Myself and my good friend, Margaret, she's a therapist. We provided uh, about a couple weeks ago, like not even, um, but when you hear it, it'll be like about a a couple weeks ago. Um, but anyways, it was too good not to repurpose and to reshare. So you're not hearing the entire clip and video and also know that we provided a webinar. So there were, you know, PowerPoint slides and notes. And so we might be referencing some things that you can't physically see. However, if you do want a copy of the full webinar, just send me an email tipsatoni at gmail.com and I can provide the uh, recording for you. But anyways, this is a really, really great lesson for you guys to learn a little bit more about why you're struggling to love your body, why you're struggling to accept your body, and what you can do differently to learn to love your body a little bit more. Um, You're going to hear a lot in here. It's kind of overwhelming. So if anything triggers you, don't be um, ashamed by it. Like these thoughts that you're having, these feelings are very normal. And it might hurt a little bit to hear where they're coming from and why they're coming from these certain places. But it's really necessary for us to have the conversation because if we're not talking about it, then we can't fix it. We can't change it. um, And we can't achieve what it is that we're looking to achieve, which is being able to accept what we see in the mirror and being okay with that. Um, And then choosing to do whatever we want to do with that. But we can't, if we don't have that solid foundation first, then we're going to always be disappointed and upset about where we arrive, regardless of the health or wellness goal, um, or even the personal development goal. So I think that already gave you a little bit of a sneak peek to what's going to be discussed. This is part one. Next week, I will release part two. Like I said, it was a long webinar. So even so, even though you're getting two full parts and it seems really lengthy, there are some missing things that you might want. So definitely send me an email, tipswithtony at gmail.com. Oh, we also at the, I'll, I'll actually, I'm going to put this in part two. Um, there's another thing that goes to part two. So make sure you listen to part two before you reach out for the full webinar, because I think then you'll know what I'm talking about. And then I won't have to email you multiple times and I can just send you one full thing. (laughs) Okay. All right. So without further ado, here is part one to the body image webinar. Um, so anyways, feel free to put yourself, introduce yourself in the chat, uh, share who you are, uh, who you are, where you're from. Um, like I said, I'm Tony Marinucci. I'm a registered dietitian and I live in New York. I'll formally introduce myself a little bit later, but I'm actually going to have Margaret introduce herself in a minute. Um, Margaret is someone who I, um, we connected on social media and I had this idea to do a body image workshop because as a registered dietitian, I work with a lot of people who come to me for weight loss, but struggle with a history of emotional eating, binge eating, have, they have a poor self body, body image. And so they think that weight loss is going to solve their problems. And although that might help certain things, it's really not so much about the weight they lose, but it's more about the life they gain through the habits that I kind of put them through and help them with. Um, but that goes to show that it's easier said than done. This has been years where our minds tend to go negative and think one way about our body. So therefore, we need to do the work to reverse that. It's not just going to happen without that. All right. So um, if you're not sure if you're in the right place, you are, if you are someone who you maybe don't love what you see in the mirror, you avoid social events, you get anxious around social events. Um, So you either just don't go or you try to come up with a bazillion excuses or you feel extremely uncomfortable, whether it's naked in front of your partner or you just feel uncomfortable getting dressed up to go to a social event. Um, You let the scale dictate your mood. 
you constantly or not constantly, but often catch yourself comparing your body to either old pictures of yourself or to um, other people that you might see on social media or in magazines. Um, you believe a certain body size is automatically going to make you happier. We'll d dive deeper into that a little bit later. Um, and then lastly, your choices of what you eat day to day depend on how you feel about your body that day. This is so common in my clients, and I really, really hope that by you participating in this webinar, you can really learn to break free from that. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Margaret, and she's going to take it away, and then I will interject, uh, interject a little bit later. If you have any questions, just put them in the chat, and we'll address them at the end. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me. I know we can hear Tony, so hopefully you can hear me. If you don't, let me know in the chat. Um, so my name is Margaret Darty, and I am a licensed marriage and family therapist in New York. Um, my practice is based out of Levittown, New York. I'm actually in my office now. Um, but I do work with clients across New York State because I'm able to do that, especially with telehealth, which is the new norm ever since COVID. Um, so I have about eight years of clinical experience. And a lot of the work that I've done in the last couple of we uh, years in my private practice is working with young adults, normally in their 20s and their 30s, going through life transitions, going through relationship changes, and body image continuously, continuously comes up. They're not comfortable with their body. They want to change their body. They are having a hard time accepting that they are a bigger size or even a smaller size or that they gain certain weight during this experience of their life or they lost a ton of weight when they worked really hard to gain all this muscle. It's so all over the place and everyone is struggling in some way, shape or form. And what I usually do with my clients is I work with acceptance with them of let's accept where we're at and how do we work on making a meaningful life. Um, so we're going to get started. So what we're going to talk about first is some of the reasons why body image may be a struggle. There's probably so many more reasons than these five, but these are pretty much a lot of the top five that I see with the clients that I work with. So first would be learn behaviors and beliefs from your family. Take a moment, think back to your childhood. I'm sure there was a parent, a sibling, an aunt, an uncle, a family friend that probably talked negatively about their own body image, maybe even your body image, the food that you ate or that was eaten in the home or the type of movement you did, or no movement at all. I can remember my parents saying, go out and play in the backyard. And I was like, I don't want to. But it was like that I had to, to kind of get that movement in. Um, so if your parents were consistently picking their bodies apart, if you had an, a sibling that struggled with their body or struggled with food or was an athlete and you weren't an athlete, those types of conversations were probably very different regarding you and your sibling. And you learned how to treat your body partly from how you grew up. A lot of times a mother-daughter relationship is usually the relationship that is spoken about most when it comes to this type of relationship. A mom is on Weight Watchers and brings her daughter with her. It'll be a bonding experience. We can go together. We can go to the meetings together. We can count the points together. Sounds really nice, but that can set you up for some disordered habits. Um, so the next one that I think the second I say the two words, diet culture, everyone's going to have some type of reaction because that is a buzzword right now. Everyone is talking about diet culture, talking about how negative diet culture is and how we're inundated all of the time with these messages, advertisements, um, constant messages of like how you can lose 10 pounds really quickly going back to Weight Watchers. And I use that a lot just because that's one that I growing up used. It was always sign up now and you get your money back when you like lose your 10 pounds. It was always like a gimmick behind it. There's always advertisements of fast, quick diets to lose your weight. These give you the idea that thinner is better. And that's simply not true. 
And the, um, the big one that everyone always sees, especially if you're scrolling Instagram before and after pictures. I mean, you type in the hashtag weight loss and you just see tons and tons of before and after pictures. And I'm going to get into that a little more when we talk about the comparison trap later on um, of how to look at that a little differently. Look at those before and after pictures and frame them differently for you. The next would be societal norms. We're constantly told that if you are fat or overweight, that you're bad and that you're unhealthy. If you are skinny, you're good, you're healthy, and you're glorified. Look at celebrities. They are always on the cover for how much they've lost weight. Um, Rebel Wilson is the recent one that comes to mind that everyone's talking about how much weight she lost. That's the only thing I've heard about Rebel Wilson in the last year is how much weight she's lost. Not about what she's doing with her career. Um, so they're telling you she is now good because she has lost all this weight. Um, there's fat jokes. I mean, those, the classic, your mom is so fat is the one that I grew up with in elementary school. So there is some normalization of if you're fat, it's okay to poke fun at you. And things like airplane seats and school desks are designed for smaller bodies. Those little desks that you like slide on in that way, like if you are even just a little bit bigger than what that desk was structured for, you are really, really uncomfortable for the 45 minutes that you have to sit in. Of course, we also have the media, social media, magazines, TV, and film telling us that thinner is better. Celebrities that are in the movies, the girls that always get the really good-looking guys are always really skinny. And then if it is somebody in a larger body, then it's like this big, huge thing that they got that guy, um, which, no, that's not how, that's not... Your body is not your worth. So whoever you're dating, whatever they look like, like they are with you for you. Um, in movies, the, the funny sidekick is always usually somebody in a larger body. Um, and especially with social media, it is a highlight reel. We are not seeing the truth. And especially if there's any clinicians on that are working with, especially teenagers that are struggling with their body, they are being inundated day in and day out with these images. And it is destructive to their mental health. And last but not least is your life and your life experiences and possible traumas that you've been through. Your body remembers traumatic experiences, sometimes even if you don't remember them or remember all of the details. Your body holds on to that stuff. Let's look at 2020. I'm in New York. Tony's in New York. COVID was, we got hit really bad here. And a lot of people are talking about how much weight they've gained since March because they're really in survival mode. So they are eating more than they used to. They are grabbing things that they would not maybe normally eat. And it's to survive. Food can be a comfort and that's okay. It's okay to say, like, I'm going to eat that Twix bar because I've had a really bad day and it's going to make me feel better. It's okay to do that. It is a coping mechanism. I don't know one person in the world that has not done that at least five times in their life. As long as if they're an adult. They're like a three-year-old. Okay, maybe they didn't. But when, when kids are crying and stuff, what do parents sometimes do? Oh, you want a cookie? Oh, you want... Like, we also give that, which kind of ties back into the learned behaviors. I'm upset. My mom gives me a cookie or buys me a cake every time I'm upset. I'm going to learn that that might make me feel better. And then that's just kind of how it goes. And that's how you comfort yourself. If you're depressed, that can increase your appetite or decrease your energy to work out. If you're depressed, you might not have an appetite and you might have a lot of energy to work out. All of that can cause you to struggle with your body image. We are going to now talk about some core beliefs. Um, core beliefs are basic beliefs that we have about ourselves, the world that we live in, and other people. We hold them absolute truths. 
they can feel like they're the truth, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are. You could have had them since you were like a little kid. They could have manifested when you were in high school and adulthood, but they're rigid. It's how you see the world. So when you're working or when I'm working with clients and I'm trying to work to learn what their core beliefs are and then change them, it does take a lot of work. And that might sound scary that it's going to take some time, but if you stick with it, you do get to that other side. You do start to look at things differently. I'm going to give you two examples of core beliefs. One, I will always be single because I am fat. There are clients that I've worked with that have had that mentality. So the thought there is that because I have extra weight or I'm in a larger body, that I am not worthy, that I am not desirable. And the feeling that goes with that is being depressed and feeling lonely. And then the behavior that goes with that core belief of I will always be single because I'm fat means that you're not going to put yourself out there. You're not going to sign up for that dating app. You're not going to go up to that person out and about that you think is really cute and introduce yourself. There's going to be no real behavioral change. Another core belief is I'm a great partner and I have lots of love to give regardless of what the number on the scale says. The thought there is I deserve love and I am worthy. You're feeling confident. And then your behavior is, is you're going to put yourself out there. You're going to sign up for that dating app and you're going to say like, I deserve to find somebody. I deserve to be with somebody. And so when your core beliefs have a more positive reframe than a negative reframe, you're more likely to have a positive outcome because of your behaviors. So when clients come in and they have the negative core beliefs, we sit and we work to as why you believe that, how long you believe that, why do you think you believe that, like what has taught you that that might be true, and what's on the other side? What could be on that other side? So we're going to go to the next slide. And we're going to talk about values versus goals. So everyone knows body goals, right? I want to fit in the pair of jeans. Um, I want to lift 25 pounds in each arm and do bicep curls. I want to be able to wear that bikini or that bathing suit. Those are all goals. Let's tap into our values. Our values are ongoing patterns of activity and something that is achievable. That's something that's not achievable. Goals we can achieve. Values are a way that we live. They say that a lot of people define happiness as being happy all the time, that things are positive, that things are going the right way. Happiness really is that you're living a meaningful life. So when you're starting to think, I want to change my body, why? Why do I want to change my body? Is it because it's actually going to make me as a person feel better? Is it actually going to improve something that I want in my life? Or am I choosing to do that so that I make somebody else more comfortable with my body? That's their goal. What's your value? So we're going to go to the next slide. Acceptance, which I talked a little bit about earlier. And when I work with clients, I say, well, we need to accept where you are. They think that I'm telling them that they need to be over the moon and like, you're right. This is my life. And like, this is how I'm going to live. And this is great. No, we want to accept where you are so that you know that in this moment in time, this is how it is. We're not thinking that it's something else. We're not trying to change it in that moment. We're being mindful of the present. Okay, this is my body size, and I am unable to do things that I like to do actively because maybe I've gained some weight, and I want to get back to a place that I can do these activities again. So I'm going to accept that I'm not there right now. And It may take me a couple of months to get there again and take some hard work on my side, but I can get there. 
when you have acceptance, there's less suffering. So everyone in their life is going to go through pain. I'm sorry. That's, that's just kind of the way it works. I wish that I could say that that wasn't. So pain is inevitable. Suffering isn't. When we choose to dwell on what isn't, we don't get to see what is. And that can be really hard and feel really bad. And that's okay. And we can work through that. We can process that together. So that's where acceptance comes from. So this is my favorite thing to do with clients lately um, and about body image or about other things that are bothering them or they're struggling with and versus or thinking. So when you have or thinking, it's very black and white. It has to be this or it has to be that. There's no gray. I love to live in the gray. The gray is where life can really bloom and allow you to live in a more meaningful life. So when you use the word and instead of or, you're having these two ideas exist at the same time and just saying them sounds more positive. So some of the examples that I gave here was I need to work out six times a day for an hour or I'll never be strong or good enough. Versus, I'm comfortable with my body, and I want to be able to lift heavier in my workouts. I need to lose 20 pounds, or I will be this uncomfortable always. I understand I gained some weight during a stressful time, and I can make some changes in my diet to feel more comfortable down the road. Allowing yourself some self-compassion, that you are a human that you struggle and that you're not 100% all the time. Nobody is. And if they're telling you they are, they're lying through their teeth. I promise you. So giving yourself some room to like be okay with that, maybe you're not okay, is really a beautiful thing. And when you start to say these types of things to yourself or you hear yourself say it's this or that, And they used to have, uh, I guess this was years ago, it was like have this food instead of that food. Mm -hmm. And that like kind of, yeah, it like drives me crazy now looking at it. Back then I was like, oh my God, this is great. Now I'm like, why can't I have either or depending on what mood I'm in? So using and instead of or can really allow you to, again, live that more meaningful, valued-based life. Okay, we have to, all right, so first, let's just say, Margaret, like, that was so good. I feel like someone is, everyone got so much value right now, you just end the webinar. We're not going to, we have more, (laughs) but, like, that was literally incredible, and I really hope that it got you guys thinking, because it really, that was the intention for it, for sure. I was taking notes, and I just want to just, like, recap a little bit, because I thought some of this stuff needs to be, like, mentioned um the whole comment from the beginning about parents bringing their children to weight watchers i'm listen i if anybody on you has done that with your child if you're a parent um you probably just didn't know any better it's probably something that maybe you were taught you're trying to do the best for your child please 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 let this child learn how to eat healthy without thinking that they're broken and they need to go into a structured system. Children are not supposed to try to lose weight. They are really should be focusing on their behaviors and, you know, you can present healthier options like to keep it available to them, but please don't sign them up for any sort of weight management program. It's really more damaging than it is helpful. Even though your intentions are to be helpful, um, it's really going to backfire in the long run. So uh, trust me, because I work with a lot of women who started their first diet at the age of like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, when going to Weight Watchers with their mom, um, doing things like slim fast. And it's just, it's, it really is unfortunate how, um, how much more traumatizing and hurtful it is rather than helpful. Um, so I did just want to kind of talk about that. Um, the movie Shallow Hell came to mind. If you guys ever seen Shallow Hell? Yes. Yeah. That's like a pretty great example of everything you just said (laughs) about like movies and media and how if the person's bigger, somehow people are like, Oh, that's good for you. You got the, you got the girl or you got the guy. It should not be that way. Um, 
And then um, one thing that came to me too, also too, was um, you were mentioning how no, nobody is perfect. So every time you catch yourself thinking of someone as being perfect and like they don't they struggle with body image. It's also people who struggle with body image come in every shape and size, every cultural background, every gender. Um, it is literally, it, it affects all of us. So although, because so, so, even though society predict, portrays um, the image to be one way, it's such a rare way. No one really looks like that. <laughs> so we all struggle no matter what size you're at. We all are struggling with that. Um, and so when someone, so I, I just, one thing that came to my mind was um, a quote that I want, that I said one time is it was when I realized it's okay not to be okay, that I became okay. Cause we're so, we're often trying to fight so hard to be perfect or to not screw up. Um, and it goes back to that all or nothing mindset, that perfectionistic mindset. And like you were saying, Margaret, the gray is where we really need to be that middle ground and recognizing that it can be both things. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And it's okay if we don't have it all figured out. Nobody ever does. And just give yourself some compassion and some grace. So that was so good. I love that so much. Um, so I see people mess asking questions and stuff, but we're going to pull use questions at the end. But if any of you can relate to this, if you want to just be like, oh my God, yeah, me too. We love the engagement of it. So feel free um, to put that in the chat. Okay. So now I will officially introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tony Marinucci. I am a registered dietitian from New York and an online um, entrepreneur. I, well, I would say I do. I used to do in-person stuff. <laughs> My business was focused mostly to doing online nutrition coaching, um, and I was doing. I wanted to do more public speaking. I was doing nutrition workshops in person. Um, unfortunately, no, that that has not happened with COVID. But I fortunately did get to do my TEDx talk uh, this past February. It had just released on YouTube. So uh, if you're on my email list, it's actually going to go out on Friday. So you'll be able to see it. Or if you follow me on Instagram, you can watch that there. Um, a lot of what Margaret had shared earlier about kind of that perception of people feeling worthy of love and not feeling worthy being the, because they're in a bigger body size, that was the image, that was the idea that I was put, was put into my head at a very young age, I got told things like, you know, if you don't lose this weight, you're never going to get a date. Like you're no boy's ever going to like you. And those sort of things really stuck with me. And I took them into my adulthood, even when my body did change. That was the craziest part. And that's why I wanted to do this webinar because it wasn't, it didn't matter how much weight I lost. It didn't matter what the scale said. I still had to work through those issues through in therapy of kind of like what is holding me back? Why is my worth, so, self worth, so tied to my image? And why is it that I keep dating people that just don't appreciate me and don't truly know what it is that they have? And it's because I didn't know what I had. And that's what my TEDx talk is about. And that's what I hope you guys can learn a little, take away a little bit of this um, from today and why I'm so passionate about this um, and why I wanted to kind of do this webinar for free. Um, so, and then lastly, I am a true believer that everyone is unique and I truly believe that's your superpower. So we're going to talk later about the comparison trap. It is not helpful whatsoever. You are all unique. And I believe that, you know, what I help people to do is, you know, heal the relationship with food and find balance in their eating habits and create a nutrition plan that's sustainable for them long-term. It is so individualized to everything about that person to the point of when they eat, what they eat, how much they eat, because they are unique. They have a different work-life balance. They have a different family culture. There's so many different things about them. And then they have different passions and different things that light them up. And there are so many things that we need to discuss that their nutrition plan needs to reflect that. Because if it doesn't, then they're going to keep trying to fit themselves into a plan that's been, you know, they found on the internet and continuously feel like a failure, which is so not true. Anybody listening, if you've ever done a diet, you are not a failure. Those diets are not meant to help you succeed. Those diets are meant for you to keep buying into those programs. Um, so when I say that you're unique, unique you, you really are. And I believe that your nutrition should reflect that as well. And that's what I'm so passionate about. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about just some things that kind of popped up into my head. Um, and the first one I thought was really interesting because you're probably here and you're trying to, you're excited, you were excited, you wanted to learn how you can love your body because 
you might be where I was growing up, looking at myself in the mirror, really hating what I saw and just constantly being super negative and putting my, my, my body image down, um, and putting myself down and believing that that was, you know, who I was just by what I saw in the mirror. Um, so you're probably hoping that, you're going to learn how to love every bit of your body. And I want you to do that. I genuinely, truly want that for you. However, I would be lying to you if I told you that I woke up every day and loved what I saw. I literally went for a run this morning. I just shared this on my story. It happened today. And I was like, you know what? I'm glad that it happened because it's, it's so real. I was running and I caught myself in like a, a mirror of like, you know, um, like a store window pane. And I caught my reflection and I saw like the bottom part of my belly jiggling. And my first thought was so negative. And it was like, oh, it's jiggling. When then I was like, wait a minute, Tony, like, of course it's jiggling. Like you're running. <laughs> like anybody that jumps, it doesn't matter if you have zero body fat, your skin will jiggle. Okay. So it's going to happen. And immediately I, you know, my old, the old me would have gone down a rabbit hole and have really just beaten myself up. Meanwhile, here I am running, doing something good for my body. I was actually really proud of myself because I was going to walk. I actually wasn't, to be honest, I wasn't even going to go out because it was kind of raining slash drizzling this morning. And the fact that I even got out there and I did, I did something for me, I felt really good about it. And I like, I switched the thought. So all that to say that you're still, you can still love your body and accept your body. Um, and you, but you also don't need to be obsessed with it and love every single bit of it, right? Like you can just accept that some days you're going to look in the mirror and you're going to like what you see and other days you're not going to love it. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but this whole kind of movement of body positivity is really kind of like, it's really intimidating, right? Because if you're hating your body, there's a, like everything, it's a process, right? You can't just, you know, wake up and change in one day. You have to go through the process. So you can't physically, you can't go mentally from literally hating your body and being so mean to yourself to magically loving your body overnight, right? There's that process. So I want to be, so I, what I, my goal for you guys, I want you to think of more so is body neutrality, right? So knowing that you might not love what your body looks like, maybe certain parts of your body, but you can appreciate the what it does for you, right? You love that my legs this morning, they walked for me. If it wasn't for my belly, I wouldn't be able to digest my food, which gave me the energy to do my walk. I am grateful that I even have a capable body. I am physically healthy. I don't have coronavirus. I have a home that I can go back to. It was raining. I don't need to stay out in the rain. I can go back inside and be covered. I have air conditioning when it gets hot. Like, I mean, I know those are more, not so much your um, about your body, but when you go to that street of gratitude, it really like it just opens up. We're talking about our body, but you just become grateful for just so many other things. And when you're grateful, you feel better, right? Rather than being negative and going back, you know, my could have said to myself, oh my gosh, look at, her, look at my belly jiggling. Why am I even trying? Why even run? Or I need to run harder, faster. I need to work out longer and I now need to restrict my intake. But I know me and I know I've been there before and restriction only leads to overeating, which only leads to restriction. And I'm done being in that diet cycle. So I am not going to engage in that behavior. So you can have the thought, but you don't need to respond to the thought and take action. You can instead notice the thought, change the thought and make it a little bit more neutral um, and really kind of just kind of remind yourself what your body is capable and what your body does for you. Um, I'll just add one more thing here with, I work with a lot of moms and I'm always telling them like, if it wasn't for your belly, your, your child would not be here. That belly, that, that part of your stomach that you keep agonizing over and you so badly want it to go away because maybe you had, you know, a C-section. So there's a scar there or something like that you know, that's not going away. But at the same time, do, would you really want it to go away? You don't want to reverse your, your giving birth to your child. That was something really important to you, really powerful for you going back to your values. That's what matters to you. So we can't allow these superficial things to get in the way of us just really truly being healthy, happy, and kind of confident in, in our skin. So, um, the last thing I, I'm not the last thing. The second thing I want to talk about is that Confidence is not a size. 
Okay. You do not magically, which is why those who um, get certain surgeries, whether it's liposuction or uh, gas or gastric bypass um, or some sort of thing to kind of change their image, but they don't do any of the inner work. They don't work on their habits and somehow they just like look in the mirror and they somehow look different. They don't feel any different about themselves. They might for a moment have times where it's like, oh, I can fit into different clothes. That's really nice. But they don't really feel any different because they know deep down they didn't put the work in. And when it comes to confidence, it's knowing who you are, knowing what you stand for, and then setting boundaries and following through with those things that you were said you were going to do. So if you do decide that, okay, I accept my body as is at the same time. So as I accept my body and like Margaret said, I want to have more energy to be with my kids, to be more attentive at class. I want to start this side hustle. I have, you know, I have my nine to five, but I'm passionate and I want to, I'm like thinking about becoming an entrepreneur and I want to have the energy to do that. And the way that I, my eating habits maybe are preventing me from that. That's okay, right? So we recognize that. But so the confidence that you're going to get from yourself isn't going to be because you somehow, you know, you can lose weight in very unhealthy ways right? So you can decide that you want to, you think that it's your weight is the reason why you're not able to do those things. And you can do a crash diet or something like that and lose weight really drastically. And then you're going to arrive and you're not going to feel much confident and let alone your probably energy will be in the tank. <laughs> so it didn't even accomplish what you said you were going to accomplish. But the, the, when, when I work with clients, the confidence that they get is because they may, they, we don't, first of all, we don't set real, unrealistic expectations. We said we set very realistic kind of mini goals each week that are aligned with their values. So if they say, I want to have more energy, then we're going to take a look at their sleep. If they say, I want to, you know, um, manage my emotional eating, then we're going to talk more so about like, maybe they need to think about stress management or boundary setting, right? So when they actually do that, and then they come to me that next week, and they're like, Tony, I was on the verge of, you know, eating um, emotionally, which is okay. They know that it's okay. But it, they knew that at the same time, they had the ability to journal, to call a friend, to go for a walk. And because they said they were going to do that and they followed through with it, that's why they become confident. So it's because we put these little behaviors each week that they're able to check off that they're like, wow, I can do this. I feel really good. And it doesn't, it's not, maybe weight loss is a side product of that or weight gain, depending on what they're seeing me for. But at the end of the day, it's not because of the size that they arrived at. It's because they made a commitment and a choice to do something and they put it out there and then they followed through with it. And it was based off of what they wanted, what their values were. They weren't doing it for anybody else. So that's truly why people can be confident at any size. That's why you see people of all sizes with confidence and you see people of different sizes with no confidence because it has nothing to do with their actual body size. It has to do with knowing who they are and really sticking to their values and what's important to them. Okay. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to just share how happiness, you don't lose weight. And I, I'm sorry that I keep saying weight loss because I know some people are trying to probably gain weight. That is just my main clientele. Um, so, but all that to say that you might have a specific body size in mind and now you arrive there. Maybe you've always wanted to fit into a size six pants, let's say, right? You finally fit into those pants and you now accept, expect happiness to just be there. But no, happiness is a choice, right? It is something that we decide we are going to take a look at our circumstances and find ways to flip them on their head and to make them more positive, okay? And it's also really going back to what we were saying earlier, it's really just being really clear about who you are and sticking to that and just living an abundant life. And so if there are certain things that are getting in your way of being able to live out that abundant life and you work through that, that's when you're likely going to feel a little bit happier every day. So something like 
spending time with your family and friends is important to you and you choose to do that more often, then you're likely going to be more happy. You're going to be happier. But if you keep saying that you're going to do something and you don't do it and you are choosing to kind of neglect that like inner voice that you, I know we, you you all have it. You all have something that's telling you I should do this or, or not. I don't want to use the word should. I want to do this. I've been meaning to do this. This is really important to me, but we keep pushing it aside and neglecting it and just not allowing that thought to come to life. Then we're going to continuously kind of feel dissatisfied. And so, so many people think that it's about arriving on a number on a scale or a certain pan size that they're automatically going to be happier, but it really goes tied back to that confidence piece. And it really goes back to saying you're going to do something and following through with it and choosing that, you know what, not every day is going to be the, the best day, the greatest day. Um, you know, not everything is going to work out as perfectly as I intended, but because I am choosing to find the gift in it or I'm choosing to recognize this is an opportunity for, you know, challenging me and what I actually want or need, we can now switch the narrative and somehow rely, re- arrive at feeling a little bit happier every day. All right, guys, I hope you learned some things in this clip. If you did, take a screenshot of it, share it on your story, tag me, tag Margaret. Let us know what you are going to do differently, whether it's the way that you're going to talk to yourself, the way that you're going to swap your thoughts, or maybe you just find comfort in knowing why it is that you feel a certain way about your body and maybe what you're going to do to change it or not change it. Just be okay with where where your mind is and your thoughts and your process and learning to uh to accept it a little bit more i hope that part is strong (laughs) um all right so that is it for me stay tuned for week two where you'll get part two as always i'm tony marinucci your registered dietitian helping you get healthy one bite at a time